It's nice to be with you. Will you be here with me now? Let's breathe the breath. And stretch a stretch. Are you ready? Take your arms. We're going to put them way up in the air. Ooh, out in front. Make your silly face. Blah. Oh, you got to stretch out those faces with a silly face. Ah. Smile. Wave. And say. How do you do? The grass is blue. The clouds are yellow balloons. The water's white, and instead of night, I see a purple moon shine a bright red light. Oh, the world you see is not the same as mine. We have different hearts, we have different minds, but what I know to be perfectly true is when you see me and I see you will say howdy. Howdy, 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 how do you do? Howdy do, everyone. It's nice to be with you, my friends. Today I want to tell you a story about a person named Mark Rothko. Mark Rothko liked to paint pictures with lots of colors. He thought that using colors was the perfect way to express emotion. And that's what he wanted to do, express human emotion. He loved art so much that when he wasn't painting, he was teaching children how to make art too. And all his students gave him the nickname Rothke instead of Mr. Rothko. He knew art was very important to help people feel their emotions. So he was happy to teach it to people like you and me. He liked to paint little snapshots of life in New York, like, in the subway system, where people would be waiting and waiting and waiting for a train. He found that feeling of waiting very interesting. But soon he learned that it wasn't the people that he was interested in, just the feeling. And that the feeling was in the color. So he started painting these, multiforms they were called just little pieces of color here and there. The colors were a way to express human emotion. Like happy, sad, scared, or mad. He came up with a new art form called color field. See, it looks like a field of colors. Like how many different oranges can you see in that picture? People like Rothke's painting so much that a restaurant offered him a lot of money to paint pictures for all of their walls. But Rothko wasn't sure. Yes, it was a lot of money. But Rothko wasn't painting for just money. He was painting for people to experience his artwork. He wanted people to be standing up close, just this far away from the paintings, looking right at them and seeing all the different colors scattered about. But he didn't think people would do that in a restaurant. After a lot of thinking, Rothke decided to do it, but he was gonna do it his way. He started painting all of these dark and stormy, gloomy looking paintings because he thought, well, if they're stormy enough, like thunder clouds and lightning, then maybe people will still look at the paintings and not be distracted by their food. But something didn't feel quite right in Rothke's compass. It started pointing him in another direction. Rothke realized that people go to restaurants to eat, not to look at paintings. So even though his paintings were dark and stormy, people probably wouldn't look at them or wouldn't care. So Rothke didn't give those paintings to the restaurant. Uh, uh, uh. Instead, he gave them to a museum where they could be hung up 
and people like you and me can stand right in front of them and feel all the colors that Rothko felt when he painted. Have you ever followed your compass and done what feels right to you? I try to follow my compass every day and do what I feel is right. I even keep a compass in my pocket so I remember. This week, we're learning all about Rothke and how his art can help us make our art. And before tomorrow, I want you to think of two colors you love. Which ones? I don't know. Follow your compass. Now get up, go play, and remember, I love you no matter what comes around.